sixth of those is a person who gives in charity in such secrecy that even their left hand did not know what the right hand gives. And so you think to yourself, well, this is what the tradition is telling us, to be just. And there's a beautiful surah, one of the very small surahs at the end of the Qur'an, surah 107, surah Ma'un. And listen to what God is telling us in terms of balancing out. He says, have you ever considered the kind of man who gives the lie to all moral law? So that's serious. You know, the kind of person who gives the lie to the message, to the moral law, to the sense of, 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 of propriety, of faith within the world. Behold, it is this kind of man that pushes the orphan away and feels no urge to feed the needy. Woe then unto those praying ones, unto those praying ones whose hearts, from their, whose hearts are remote from their prayers, who only want to be seen and praised and yet deny all assistance to their fellow man. So God's saying, you know, you we think of religion, we think of religion, well, it's prayer, isn't it? But actually, God said, no, the closest thing to me is justice. When we think of religion, we think it's prayer, and God's saying, woe unto the person who prays and doesn't help the needy, who doesn't help the orphan, who thrusts the orphan away. Again in the Quran, has he not found thee an orphan and given thee shelter for the prophet, peace be upon him? He was an orphan. Found thee lost and guided thee, and found you in want and given sufficiency. Therefore the orphan shall never wrong, never wrong the orphan. And the prophet, peace be upon him, said, I am the guardian, I am the, I and the guardian of the orphan will be raised into the garden like this, bringing his two fingers together. So to look after the orphan, to look after the orphan will be like this on the day, the final day with the prophet in the garden. And the person who strives on behalf of the widows and the poor is like those who strives in the way of God, literally fights, fi sevilila, and those who fast in the day and, the, and pray at night. So you can imagine, these are all these religious injunctions. You know, the person that goes on there, he's fighting for justice, you know, the, we think of that as the big thing, giving their life, literally. And the person that's fasting all day and he's praying all night, and we're reminded. But the person who strives on behalf of the widow and the poor, this is what it's like. And so you can see, well, it, it's there. It's absolutely, fundamentally there within the tradition. The notion of justice. The notion of being aware of bringing equity to the world. Because there is enough. God says and reminds that he's provided us ample. And we know that. We know that there's, there's ample within the world. We know that there is enough food. It's just we waste a quarter of it. We know that there's enough money. It's just it resides within 1%. We know that there is sufficient to, to, to house 7 billion people, but yet it's the problem with distribution of that wealth where the inequality comes. So God is bountiful, God is merciful, God is providing, but it is us who are hoarding. It is us who are creating the disequilibrium, who are creating the, the injustice who are feeding the injustice. And when I say us, yes, it's us Muslims as well. It's us Muslims. We can't say to ourselves, the West. The West does this, the West does that. Because we are the West. Most of us are part and parcel of this society, engaged within this society. Our consumer goods, our iPads, my, iP my iPad, our iPhones, our Blackberries, our, our clothing, our, our trainers, our cars, our houses, our electricity, our consumption. We're part of this. We're part of this inequality, this disequilibrium. Saji described this as an ivory tower. The university life is an ivory tower. Believe me, when you get out of the workplace, it really is an ivory tower. But it's an ivory tower in so many other ways. Because 50% of the population will not achieve five GCSEs. You know? Hell, you, you know, we think student fees are, are bad and that it's terrible, but it gives us at least an opportunity to earn an income of a much higher level as graduates. But 30% of Muslims in this country will leave school with no qualifications. It's about, it's about between 17 and 22% for other populations. But 50%, no, five GCSEs, they don't, they don't get the basics, the very bare minimum of education, let alone being part of the sort of 10% who have degrees. And yet, is this 
what do we do? What do we do for this? And Sajid's given us a very, very practical demonstration of what's being done just a few miles from here, just five minute drive from here. Do we know about it? How many of you knew about Himmer before you even came here tonight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hands. So, you know, not very many. Now, you can say, well, you know, they're not doing enough PR, right? But you can also say, what are you doing? Have you searched for it? Have you searched for poverty in Nottingham? Have you wondered how, how, can, I, how can I source, how can I help, how can I fulfill the theory? Because we're very good at theory. You know, all these verses that I just read out, very, very, you know, beautiful verses. But they're abstract unless we make them concrete in the world. God is beautiful. How do we manifest beauty? How are we manifesting beauty in this world? God is merciful. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. How many times is that said every day? Begins everything. Bismillah, Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The merciful, Rahman, Rahim, the kind. We're saying all of that all of the time. Our lips are saying it. Our lips are saying it. Our lips are saying it. Do our hands say it? Does our heart say it? Are we searching for the orphan? Are we searching for the homeless? Are we searching for those in need? And you can say, well, I've got deadlines. I've got a report. I've got a thesis. Is there time for Facebook? Is there time for Twitter? Is there time for PlayStation? Is there time for Hangout? Is there time for chat? Is there time for all of these things? Because if there is, I'm not saying don't. But then that means there's time in the calendar. And you know, once you start building and, and engaging, subhanAllah, Allah puts barakah in your time. God puts blessings in your time. So one hour stretches, really stretches. One pound stretches. Money, your money, the money in your pockets, never diminished, never diminished by charity. And that is a promise by God. And so today, we need to recognize we talk about the clash of civilizations all of the time. Clash, 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 Huntington, oh my goody aunt. You know? But let's, at least he did one thing. He addressed Islam as a civilization. So let's start thinking civilizationally. When you start thinking civilizationally, you, you know, when you're engaging with the discussions of social justice, that's very civilized. It's a very civilized discussion. And instead of taking well, trying to negate the notion of the clash. You turn around and we talk about the collaboration of civilizations. Who am I going to collaborate with? They're collaborating with 40 other organizations, trade union organizations and activism, etc., etc., etc. You know, you're an ISOC, fantastic. What's the engagement with Friends of the Earth, with Help the Aged, with, with the, the Christian SOC in order to be able to do a, a homeless project? What are the, where's the engagement, the collaboration? The best way to address the rhetoric of the clash is to deny it physically and to collaborate. <laughs> well, glad that one was went down. We have to stand against hatred. We have to stand against hatred of all kinds to be just, even if it be against ourselves and perhaps our, our egos or our, print, you know, our, our views to stand up for people, to voice the voiceless, to, to speak truth to power, however painful that is, to be for small kindnesses, the small kindnesses, the random acts, the conscious awareness that there's another person, not walking past the man day after day after day and saying, that's none of my business. You know, the reserve approach. That's not the way. That's not the way of the authentic tradition of the Prophet ﷺ. It's not the way that God asks us to be. When he, God says, oh son of Adam, I fell ill and you didn't visit me. And he will say, oh Lord, you know, master of the universe, how should I visit you when you are the Lord of the worlds? And he will say, did you not know that my servant so-and-so had fallen ill and you visited him not? Did you know that if you visited him, you would have found me? And he 
ask the same question. Oh, son of Adam, I asked you for food and you fed me not. Put that in a context. I was a refugee. I was hungry. I was a person that, I, I was a single, single homeless mom and I got kicked out. I was suffering from domestic violence. I was a refugee and I lost my access to benefits. I got drunk. I was on drugs. I lost my way and I found myself homeless. A whole list of people that this potentially could be, or as my grandmother would say, there but for the grace of God go I, because so easily it can be us. Do we not think that we're potentially there on the edge of mental illness that could turn us homeless? That we can't be in a domestic relationship that's abusive and we leave? That we can't face poverty? I've been homeless in my life a number of times. When I was three years old, my mother was forced to live in one room with three bunk beds. There were six of us. We lost everything. Her business went down. We lost everything. My mum, before she went into the kitchen, was so horrendous. She would clean everything with Domestos. We shared one kitchen with 40 other families. We shared a toilet with 40 other families. Go in, there was excrement everywhere. There was lice everywhere. This is going back, I mean, I'm, it's going back 30 plus years. <clears throat> Quite a lot, actually. We lost everything, and there we were. We were the only hat. We were the, when we left, we were the only family that didn't have the whole place fumigated when we left. But we, we were in a situation of homelessness through no fault of my mother's. When I was 19 again, she lost her, uh, no, 18, she lost her entire, we lost our house, and I was homeless again. I remember being homeless. I remember li being in our old battered mini little transit van with my fish, with my fish bowl on my lap and the fish swishing, and my skirt being soaked, with the dogs in the back, being homeless and not knowing where to go. So it's so easy to be in that position. So don't think, well, I'm an educated person. I'm at Nottingham University. I have this, I have that. And not know, because there, but for the grace of God, go I. And so, when we hear the word pensioner poverty, what does that do to us? When we're told that justice is the closest thing to God consciousness, is it just that there are people who have lived their whole lives paying their taxes, engaging, who suffer on the brink of poverty? Is it just that they don't dare turn on the heating for fear of the, the heating bill? Is it just that people of el our elder elders will die of hypothermia, or they choose between heating and food. Is that just? Is there an answer? You stunned into silence? Is that just? Is it right? Is it something we can do something about? Is it our responsibility? And so when we ask these questions, we ask the questions of the elderly, of the young. I remember children at my school used to come to school on eating frozen pizza because their parents were drug addicts. Their parents were drug addicts and couldn't provide them breakfast. So they come to school eating frozen pizza. And the other day, I was reading an article on the, on the BBC website where children are coming to school with frozen chips for their packed lunch. That children are actually not getting lunch. That there is no food. An article from, say, a report by Save the Children when women are suffering malnutrition in this country, suffering from malnutrition because they give their food to their children. Is this a Muslim issue? Because we talk about Muslim issues as if it's just Palestine or Iraq or Afghanistan and their issues but it's also an issue of the elderly it's also an issue of the woman that is hungry it is also an issue of the child it's the local poor and the global poor and everyone is our neighbor these are human issues and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he came as a mercy onto mankind he did not come for the Quraysh his tribe that was not. 
you know, we say, well, I, it's my race. I'm dealing with the Pakistani issues. I'm dealing with the Bengali issues. I'm dealing with the Malay issues. I'm dealing with the Indonesian issues. I'm dealing with the English issues. I'm dealing with whatever. My race. My tribe. No. He didn't come for his tribe. He didn't come for Arabia. He didn't even come for the Muslims. It wasn't about that. We say, well, I deal with the Christian work. Well, I deal with the Jewish work. Well, my, my field seeks, and I'm dealing with Muslims. He didn't come for the Muslims. He came as a mercy. That's the first thing. A mercy. A mercy, a benefit, a kindness to mankind. To mankind, the whole of humanity. That is his description. And we are the inheritors of that tradition. And so, the common good is our responsibility. To contribute to the common good. The good of all. Not what's good for the Muslims. And it is intrinsically part of our faith. It says in Surah Al-Asr that we are indeed, human beings are in a state of complete and utter loss. We don't know where we're at. We're all over the place. Unless you believe, unless you recognize the divine, the beauty, the awe-inspiring awe, the one, Ahad, the one, the unity of the universe, to recognize that and to do good deeds. Because it's not enough just to recognize that and be in your ivory tower or on your mountain or on your, you know, your hermitage, inspired by this beauty, this awe. It's not enough. You have to do good deeds. And then you have to tell the truth. And then it asks you, because it knows that this is going to be very hard, to be patient. Because when you take on this work, you will need huge amounts of patience. And so when I return to my beginnings, that little child on the corner of the pavement or in the supermarket, wondering how many people could be fed with that car or where are those apples from or what's going on. Islam, that message, as an inheritors of the, all of the prophets, as a, as a faith that inherits all of the prophets, as a faith that inherits the eternal message from the divine creator all the way through, as the inheritors of all of those social justice movements, of all of those messages of social justice, we must stand for justice. For justice is the closest thing to God consciousness. Jazakallah khair. Anything I've said of any good is from Allah. The mistakes they are Thank you. Huh? Questions and answers. Yes, you see, we did quite a good job, Sajid and I, of being quite speedy. We were quite punchy and getting through it quite quickly. Is this my water? Is that yours? Well, I believe it's yours. Okay. Questions. You can have questions theory, you can have questions practical, you can have any sort of questions you like, really. Uh, uh, normally I do questions, but I'd like to make this a very short statement. Absolutely. Very and yet, um, the work, all the evidence, as my family will testify, is that I'm mostly in India. And yeah, by following my unable to do that local loss, encourage them to persuade him out actually jump on board, you bring it in events, to bring cans of food in for the holders of non -holders. And the reason I mention that is because if an idiot like me can do it, anybody can do it. So I don't want people often think, I can't do this, I can't do that. Trust me, you know, people can. We'll do an Obama. Yes, you can, huh? <laughs> Thank you. And it is true. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, things like that, they're small, they're practical, but I think they're helpful. Yes, absolutely. If you want to do something practical, very quickly, there's a young brother there, I believe he's your ISOC president, Yusuf. Go and petition him. I don't believe he would need petitioning, but Himma is calling upon all the, particularly Muslim organisations, but the wider community, to partner with us on our food bank. So the ask for, particularly for organisations of faith, is once a month, at the Jummah to, for the congregation to bring a tin each. Uh, and I expect you have about two to three hundred people attending the Jummah on the Friday sermon. Um, alhamdulillah, about nine mosques and Muslim organizations have agreed to do that across 
the Muslim denominations. Uh, so if you want to do something really practically, very quickly, say, should the ISOC join and become a partner of the Himal Food Bank? You can petition him, he's there. Whilst you are thinking of some questions, I'll just put a little video on of an activity that we did. Because I'm conscious of Sarah said that we didn't do any PR. We actually did. We got the BBC to do it. Far more cheap. I wasn't saying that you didn't. I was just... <laughs> On to other news now, and plenty of curry and rice was on offer last night as a charity lead on a free banquet for the homeless. The event in Nottingham had been organised by the Hema Institute. The food had been donated by local companies. Now there are plans to develop the idea into a weekly drop-in service. With people of breaking barriers and getting together, there are people who are homeless, people who are facing destitution, um, who are come together to enjoy a good meal. And I think that was our first ever Big Supper, and some of the people in the room on that very night are here today. And that's been going. It is a roaming soup kitchen that goes to various uh, homeless organisations once a month. And at this, at the end of February, meant that we have ran, is our two year anniversary, and we have provided over 2,000 cooked meals. That's something that we've achieved. That's not me. That's people in this room, just like yourselves, who are students, who work, who've got families, just like me, just like Sarah. Ordinary people coming together to enact change. And it's been two years.